Welcome, welcome, welcome. You are live on Rhonda's Room Over the Top TV. <laughs> and I am on location with my girl, Laura Point. What's Dexter. up, what's up, what's up, everybody? Man. <laughs> no, 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 no. We, we, we got the prosciutto, prosciutto, prosci no, prosciutto Perse is what you get. Prosciutto. Prosecco. I should know this. I'm Italian. All right, so to a great night tonight. Absolutely. They ain't ready. All right. Rhonda got me drink my first drink <laughs> of 2021 with this one right here. That's all right. You're brown and Italian. You got to drink some wine of some kind. Um, but I'm so excited to have you here tonight. And guys, if you're on Facebook. You're going to want to go ahead and put your comments in. Ask Laura anything you Ask want. Ask me anything you want. And I'll bring them up on the screen. And you want to share this, share this, share this. Share, this. share, share, share. I am telling you. It's going to be a good show. Man, it's, it's, it's going to be we just gonna say it's gonna be fucking epic. Okay. okay. <laughs> it's gonna be beyond epic. Okay. Um, so we're gonna tell all about you, about your background and stuff like that. Now explain where we are. I'm on location, guys. So okay. where are we right now? This is my first place, guys, in 10 years. So that's incredible. Yeah, my first place in 10 years. Yeah. Thank you, God. Um, so if you don't know my story, in 2008, I lost everything. Mm -hmm. And so from 2008, I lived in my sister's properties. I lived right. with people, but this is my first place. So this is restoration for me. Very good. This is restoration Very for good. me. And so, yeah, we're hanging out in my new crib. I love it. Love it. Love it. Yeah. So proud of you. So oh, happy man. for you. I'm and so happy. Yeah, nothing like having your own. Absolutely. Nothing like having your own. All right. So let's dig right in so we can, they can get the background of you before we get into all the fabulous and explain what all of this is <laughs> behind us. Okay. Um, so. You're from New York. From New York, Harlem, 152nd Street between Amsterdam and Broadway, baby. <laughs> That's the rough part right there, in case y'all didn't know. Okay, I'm from Buffalo. It's the play play oh, New York. Oh, my goodness. It's, it's the upstate New York, but, you know, yeah, we, we both from New York. My sister went to college, Buffalo State. Really? Yeah, she went to Buffalo okay. State University. Okay. Yeah. Well, I lived there for a little bit, and then we moved to the Poconos and stuff like that. Oh, okay. But, uh, and then I transplanted here to Georgia. Okay. But growing up in in Harlem, so tell us a little bit about that. First of all, do you have any kids? I have one son. Okay. I'm a mother and a grandmother. Okay. Um, have you ever been married? I've been married twice. They put a ring on it, boo. They put a <laughs> ring. They put a ring on it, boo. All the twice. Same lady, yeah. Twice. <laughs> hey, I got two under my belt too. Okay, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. in between husbands at the moment. Okay. okay? <laughs> the real one is coming. The you real know, one the is coming. Third time is a charm. Okay. It might be in the process. Well, we after, gotta, yeah. after what we were talking about, yeah. I don't know. Rhonda was putting me down with game with this, yeah. with the dating apps and everything. Mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't know anything about. I don't know what's gonna happen with me, child. Hey, whatever you want to happen, that's what's gonna happen. You know, I don't I'm, know. I'm, I'm kind I don't of know. I, I might I might embrace the Oprah Stedman aspect right now. Okay. We, we who knows? Who knows? Who you know, knows? Once right? you get in your 50s, you're like, it, it don't freaking matter at this point, yeah. you know. But true. That's true. a whole nother show. True. But okay, so you have a son and you have a grandchild. That is correct. Okay, so Maddie, you can come in. I'm sorry, guys. That's okay. Maddie, you can come we in. We have an audience member. We have tonight. an audience member. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh no, 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 no. Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, dog with a beautiful collar. <laughs> But <laughs> okay, this is gonna interrupt yeah, the show yeah, so much. She's gonna no, not she's gonna not. Oh my yep, goodness! Yep, yep, no, this. come we on. We got a we got a fancy poodle in here. Just she is very. Okay. I'm so sorry. That's okay. We're gonna handle this. We're gonna no, take uh -uh. care of this in a second. We're gonna get the dog out of here. All right. All right. There we go. <laughs> Nothing like on location. TV. Hey, right. Nothing like okay. Live TV. <laughs> All right. So um. You've got uh, your son. son now, grandson. how old were you when you had your son? 21. 21. Okay. Yes. So give them a little bit of a background of about your history and where you come from and what you've been through. Ooh. Yeah. We okay. So there. I'm not going to, I'm not going to bore you guys, but um, from Harlem, New York, as you said, born and raised in Harlem, New York. Um, at six years old, my mom died and that created a, a trauma. A uh, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder is right. what I suffer from, okay. but we weren't identifying it as that. Okay. That was actually um, a diagnosis relegated to people who were combat veterans. Gotcha. You know, they didn't even yeah. lend that yeah. that label yeah. to people outside. And so um, I suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder. My family didn't know anything about that. Right. And so because I did not know how to grieve the loss of my mm -hmm. mother, 
I kind of like my behavior switched. Yeah. Started yeah. getting high when I was 14 years old. Gotcha. Started getting high when I was 14 years old. Okay. First time I used cocaine, I was 14 years old right. at a Rick James concert. Shut up. No, Rick child. James. Rick was throwing weed out there and Man. everything. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And from the first time I used it, I loved it. Okay. The euphoria, everything yeah. about it, I loved it. And mm -hmm. it took me so far outside yeah. of myself. Right. Um, and uh, I continued to um, just behave badly mm -hmm. because I didn't know how to deal with the trauma. Right. And um, I went on to freebasing and then okay. crack cocaine okay. until I discovered I was pregnant with my son at 21. Okay. That that attachment to him mm -hmm. gave me something to consider other than my pain. Oh, yeah, and other than yourself. Other than myself. Right. I got clean. Awesome. All right. Had my son, yes. but went back out. Right. And um, my family called my family, and my, my family from Baltimore physically snatched me and took okay. me to Baltimore, Maryland. Okay. I got myself together, mm -hmm. came and got my son, and never looked back. And so- Wonderful. Yeah, from from that point on, I started to kind of like change my life a little bit. Wonderful. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, we got Pam saying, "What's good?" Oh, hey, Pam, how you doing? Um, that's that's incredible because um, you you brought up a couple of really good things. You know, you know, I'm a counselor. Yeah, okay? I do. So I do. The the post, you know, the death of your mother. Yeah, if you don't if you don't grieve that loss, that that sets you in a downward spiral, especially yeah. depending on the age you were when your mother died. You know, because then here you are to fend for yourself and you don't know what it is about, you know, being a woman. You don't know about men. Yeah, you don't yeah, know about yeah, all yeah. of that stuff. Yeah. And then you you look for that attachment. You look for somebody to love you. You look for some place to fit yeah. in and belong. Yeah. And so that's a normal pathway that you would find. And then, you know, it's, it's starting out with Coke, whatever your first experience is, whether it's good or bad, that determines if you're going to be an addict. It really yeah. does. Because like I tried Coke. Um, and it didn't do anything for me. I was like, I don't know. I don't know what what, 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 they, what, yeah, what so are they like, freaking out about I this tried it, yeah. I even tried it twice, I think. And it didn't do anything each time. Okay. So Good. I had no thank desire. Lucky, thank your lucky stars, right, right? Right. And I never got involved in any kind of drug because if I tried something, it never did anything. Okay. But um, for me, when I would drink when I was younger, that's what. Okay. Me, you know, but it, since you had a great experience and yeah, you, you're always chasing that first time. You always, always, always chasing yeah. that. And, and yeah. on both my mother and my father's side, mm -hmm. there, there is a history of addiction. Gotcha. Yeah. On my both mom sides. was an alcoholic too. So yeah, yeah. So they, they call that having a, a predisposition. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. And just because you're pre, you have a predisposition doesn't mean you're predisposed. Cause a lot of people think that you're predestined, you know, it's just because there's a predisposition there doesn't mean you're predestined. Like yeah. if your parent is this, you're absolutely going to be that. No, no, that's not no. True. right, right, right. That's right, not right, true. Right. It's a choice. It yeah. really is a choice, but, um, okay. So you got clean, did all that. So that's wonderful. Um, and then how did you get into writing? Because you are a screenwriter, you are an uh, actress, you are a model, you are, I mean, it was, you got it was no, award after it award. was like so much stuff after that. So, what I'm doing now is what I always wanted to do. Okay. So, when I eventually got clean, because mm -hmm. in between getting clean, now I'm clean, I have my right. son, all right? right? I'm in Baltimore, mm -hmm. but now I don't know how to take care of him at the level that I want him to be taken care gotcha. of. So the insanity is, is that now I start selling the same drug mm -hmm. that I was using. Okay. Okay. And it wasn't until I got locked up, I got locked right. up coming from New York, right. Interstate transportation, wow. possession of packaging material, wow. da, 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 CDS okay. over 28 okay. grams. Wow. And okay. I, I appear before this judge that I don't even think she was a judge. I really think she was an angel. Really? And it's funny. She could have put me under the jail. Yeah. 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 You know? And so what she eventually did is once I did the time that I did, she gave me community service in the courthouse. Okay. That that rarely ever happened. No. And I was actually able to be around all of these women of all different colors and nationalities nice. that really supported yeah. me. And um, I started changing my life. And so... 23 years before I got to this, I worked in corporate America. I've okay. worked for Drug Court. I've okay. worked for Johns Hopkins Center for Social nice. Concern. Nice. I worked for the Veterans Administration okay. at upper 
management. Not that was nothing. But God, I didn't go to college until I was like forty something. Really? What yeah, did you go to I didn't go for so Janet Douglas College, Health and Human Services. All right, you all know, right. Because they they could not justify my promotions mm-hmm. or my salary mm-hmm. without me having a degree. A degree. Yeah. You know, and so um, it was twenty three years between that and this, and I I started writing in a mm-hmm. rant to God because in yeah. the economic collapse of 2008, I lost everything. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. So how did you lose everything? Who Like a lot of people say they lost everything, but your everything is everything. I thought lost everything. Um, yeah. So when you lose um, an income, and so I, I wasn't, I wasn't necessarily living from paycheck to paycheck mm-hmm. because I can honestly say that from 2008 to 2010, mm-hmm. I was able to maintain okay. both my houses, okay. as in two. Okay. A house and a vacation house. Nice. Both my cars, a okay. Lexus and a truck. Okay. My, I, I, mean, I was able to maintain for two years. All right. But I was not able to get work. So oh. I'm using my 401k yeah. and my savings and right. everything Depleted. is slowly depleting, depleting, yeah. depleting. Yeah. And so, um, I was angry Mm -hmm. because I felt like, well, I thought, Mm -hmm. I thought that I was exempt or I should be Mm -hmm. exempt from dealing with present day Mm -hmm. troubles and worries because my mother died. You know, I still got a chip on my shoulder because my mother died. You know what I mean? I think the world owes you something. I think the world owes me something. Right. God said, well, guess what, Miss Missy? It's (laughs) your turn again. Yeah. And, um... In my anger, I started to rant mm. to God. Yeah. And um, he answered me yeah. and told me to write. Awesome. It's so incredible that you say that because um, I wrote a book and it came out the same way. It's when I lost all my kids and my grandkids to foster care. Wow. And it took me 14, 15 months to get them back. I was so angry at God. Like I would, I, the way I talk to God is going to upset a lot of y'all, but Hey, no, that's is, that. that, that like, what the fuck, God? Yeah, yeah. It, it Are gets you to, kidding me? And you see, know, and I got that. I'm like that. I would talk just like I would talk, and because I had to, I didn't have anybody to talk to. And then I started to write, and then I wrote, and I didn't even think about what I was writing. I wrote and wrote and wrote, and I read it afterwards. And I was like, oh my god, this woman sounds like she knows what she's talking about. It took me a minute to connect the dots, but I, I wrote to get all my pain out. That's a broken spirit. So when you say you wrote without thinking about it, it's true. Yeah. When God is inspiring you, you're not thinking about it. You're just, and I have one chapter that's literally a conversation. I wrote everything I heard. Like I wrote the questions. I wrote exactly what I said and I wrote the answers I heard. You know, and it was just me working through and that was the only thing I had to to, to do. And I'm telling you, writing and journaling is something. And yeah, and I, the book got published, but and I never intended it for anyone to read it. OK, but it was my way to get through. But then I did get it published so that my kids would know the truth, okay. because when they came back, I wanted them to know what the truth all, was. everything that happened. Yes. With, with, yeah, and yeah, yeah, everything yeah. about me and, and all this other stuff. And I'm actually revamping that right now. Wow. I'm revamping it. So um, I'm glad that you you wrote. So when you, once you started writing, when did you realize you had a gift for writing? Once the anger got gone. Well, it was poetry initially. OK. It was um, my rant to God and his response. OK. And I started posting it on social media. OK. And I started getting really great positive responses. And based on those responses, I started getting radio interviews. Nice. And so it it kind of like it took on. Well, he told me to write. Mm -hmm. And for me, I felt like, Mm -hmm. right. I don't I don't I couldn't make the connection. Right. Right. But when I did begin to write, then doors began to open. Yeah. From the radio interviews, magazines, from Mm -hmm. magazines to people saying, hey, we're doing this thing here. Can you come? Yeah. You know, and that's how it because I was actually traveling to Atlanta mm-hmm. um, while I was still living in Baltimore doing events. Nice. And that's how I was meeting a lot, a lot of okay. people, you know. Okay. And so um, I still didn't know necessarily that I had a gift, mm-hmm. but I knew that this was something that I had always wanted to do. OK. Yeah. Now, Isn't it something how when you finally step out and you do that thing that you're so afraid of? 
And I say this to all my clients all the time, you know, everybody has a story and your oh, yeah. story needs to be heard because when you tell your story, other people see themselves in it and they look to you to how did you get through it? Yeah, And absolutely. then you give them courage. Yeah. But you know, your story needs to be told because there's somebody waiting. You've got the answer that somebody needs, you know, I and, agree. you know, and it's, it's when you finally step out and you do that, it's like, everything opens up for you and the yeah. very thing you feared the most that you didn't want no one to know and i always tell people you know that story that one that you don't want nobody to know that ugly story the that's one that's the gonna one, cost that's you the one your that's friends gonna bring somebody out that's not, the that's, one that's, that's gonna that, yeah. cost you your pride the yeah. one that you don't want nobody to know yeah that's the story you need to tell because that's the truth that's the truth and once you get that authentic with yourself and then you're free to be yourself. That's why we that's why we said we had to tell the story that we're telling yeah. now before we started doing other yeah. filmmaking based on exactly what you yeah. just said. Y'all <clears throat> wait. Wait. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. This is just the background, okay? Just to give you to what we're really going to talk about. Um well all of it is everything, but we got like so much in places to go. And I want to bring attention to Pam's comment here because it says, I can relate to Laura because I was an addict of addiction for almost 22 years wow. and I've been clean for almost 12. Good for you, Pamela. Very good for you. So proud of you. And yeah, and see, and that's what I'm talking about. When you're, when you're, your truth is in front of people and you're no longer ashamed of it, and you can say, yes, I was an addict. Yes, I did this. Yes, courage. I lost everything. And like, okay, if you did it, then I, then I might it. be able to do it too. <clears throat> Absolutely. So I'm so proud of you. Oh, I'm so proud it's of nothing, you. It's not, nothing to do with I'm me. I'm so proud of you. It's nothing to do with me. It's but all just, to, him. just to take that step, because fear paralyzes people oh, all the time. Sure. And fear stops people. <laughs> dead for in their sure, tracks. For sure, for sure. So guys, if you have any questions, you know, you go, you can go ahead and post them and everything hey, um, Teddy. as well. Yeah. And we've got lots of people watching and make sure you share this guys. Okay. Make sure you share this. All right. So now you said you started with poetry. Do you remember what your first rant was or what your first poem was? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Give us a little taste. Mm. Okay. <laughs> okay. Mm, okay. <clears throat> all right. I really need to ask you guys, who do you think you are? Mm. I must confess, I'm fed up with your mess. This time you've gone a tad bit too far. Why don't you and I take a walk or walk down memory lane? You took my mother when I was just six years old and mm. still I live with the pain. My father lost his ever loving mind in response to losing his wife. And mm. I, in turn, I lost them both. And it really complicated my life. Now he shipped me off to my grandma's house to dwell in amongst her junk while she was a good God-fearing woman. Her husband, he was a drunk. My entire world changed in a blink of an eye and I just didn't know how to deal. So I turned to drugs and hanging with thugs because I no longer wanted to feel. Now I was angry with you for a very long time. I managed to trust you again. Mm -hmm. I put my hand in the palm of yours and once again called you my friend. Now I've tried very hard to redeem myself and I've mm -hmm. tried to do most things right. But it appears to me like it's never enough and you constantly want to put up a fight. What have I done to deserve this slaying? Mm -hmm. Not enough church, fasting, praying. These recent events are relentless, disturbing, and quite bizarre. Are you a God who takes pleasure in pain without measure? God, who do you think you are? He said, I am God. I am the Lord. I am your God. The last thing you want is to make me go hard. I mm. put up with enough of your insolent prayers, your do's, your don'ts, your threats and your dares. I am the creator of heaven and earth. Your intermittent discomfort cannot measure my worth. Who do you think kept you from day to day when you play Russian roulette with your life? Who do you think kept the death angel at bay more than once or twice? My hands were full trying to keep up with you and all of your miscreant behavior. 
This is what I do because my, my love is true. So respect me as your savior. As far as your mother, I know that you loved her, but uh, her work on earth was done. She is dwelling with me, waiting to see the woman that you will become. I owe you no more than you owe yourself. So put your hard feelings back on the shelf. I suggest that you do this much sooner than later. My patience is growing thin and my wrath is growing greater. Your most prudent option at this very moment is to cast your cares upon me. I care for you so much more than you know, and I love you much more than you see. All that you've gone through and continue to endure purifies your tainted heart, removing thoughts obscure. I recognize that of all your tests, this one is exceptionally hard. But if you stand still and continue to do my will, you will see that I am God. And every time I talk to him, he talked back to me. Jesus, God, I got, I got goosebumps. Oh my God, that was incredible. That was incredible. Thank you. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That was incredible. And every time I talk to him, he talked to me. Is nothing mm -hmm. like the voice yeah. of God. Yeah. Yeah. That's incredible. Wow. All right. I'm going to take a break real fast. I'm going to play this replay here and we will be right back. All right, y'all. We are back. We I'm are back. I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> oh my gosh. We had to recollect ourselves. That was a <laughs> moment we had. I mean, if you could have been in this room right now, I got goosebumps. I mean, I was fixated on you. And like, <sighs> as your t your eyes are welling up, mine are welling up because I felt that. I felt that. The you, voice of God you, is, is man. And I mean, just your passion and saying it because it was your truth and it, I could feel your pain and what you said. And that's that's what makes you not only an incredible writer, but an incredible actress too. And I talk about this all the time. I can't stand actors that just memorize You lines. say that all the time. And okay. Yeah. I'm just, <laughs> you, got, you, like you got to be able to feel, yeah. <laughs> you got to be able to feel something. Like I believed you, you had me, I was crying with you. And it's like, you have to be able to You got to make that, them believe in you now. Know? And, but the thing is, is it came from a real place. It came from a real place. Um, oh gosh, I'm missing comments here, y'all. I got all caught up. All right, so Teddy is is lighting it up here. Is, Proud of you boy. one day at a time. Oh, he was snapping his fingers when you was doing <laughs> it, right? We needed like a jazz vibe going here. Uh, I got through the same way. I started writing hey, also, April. Pam. Okay. April, April. Hey, April. I promise you your commercial. You got to get that dog out of here. Yeah, he got to I go. promise you the commercial is coming. I messed up the video thing, but. What's the commercial you Okay, at? so let, let's, let's do our shout out. Okay. This show is being sponsored by April Wynn Morrison. And she has, hold on. Let me get the. I'm April Morrison of April Morrison Productions, executive producer of <laughs> The Next Assignment, yes, executive yes. producer of Cameras Rolling, the 
expose and yeah oh, we about to drop one on oh, y'all yeah with that. we are and i'm gonna give you Ooh. her number in a minute i see i have this video that i made for her see it's just i can't get it to upload. oh i love that but, video okay, so here uh you can reach her at 470-646-4805 now if you need somebody to do executive producing for your um uh film or feature or something like that i'm telling you april is the one you want if you need a writer this is the chick right here to get to write your stuff. And man, she's going to put it on lock for you. <laughs> All right. And I promise April, I will have the video up for the commercial. So let's transition now. Um, so get, so with the writing and everything, when did you start acting? Okay. So I'm, I'm coming back and forth here, whatever. And so I knew I was going to eventually, nothing in, in Baltimore for me. I was living in, my sister had properties, I was living in one of her properties. I had renters. That's how I was paying the rent, mm -hmm. but I wasn't working. And so it was almost like, even with the skills that I had, because I had mad skills, mm -hmm. I couldn't get a job to save my life. Wow. So I understand that God was like, yeah. I don't, that was that. So yeah. um, I decided that I was going to come to Atlanta. Now I could have gone to New York because, you know, they're doing mm -hmm. the whole acting right yeah. but it's expensive and I have yeah. family. Yeah. And I didn't want to be in a place where I could potentially get comfortable. Okay. You know what I'm saying? My family will push me, right. but here I oh, had you to, had to survive. I had to survive. So I, I come here and I'm doing the whole, the whole, everything that we do, mm -hmm. extras, mm -hmm. all of that I on the set all, yeah. all day. Yeah, you have to, you got to build yeah. it up like that. Learning the, the language, learning yeah. the protocol or whatever have mm -hmm. you. And I'm doing that, but extra work. I really, really, I was over that so quick. Yeah, I, I didn't, I, I did a oh lot of it God, too. And I, I was, was like, okay, wait a minute, 13 hours for $50. That, wait, wh why am I doing And No. No words. You don't even know if you're going to be on screen. Right. And, and they need actors. And some some sets were great. Yeah. But very few. Yeah. And then, Rhonda, this is what kind of bugged me out. Mm -hmm. There were people who were more seasoned extras. Yeah. And they made extra work seem like, oh, I've been on this. I'm like, oh, I don't even want to fall right. into that right. whole thing. Right. right. And um, I kept doing my thug fizzle. And I always shout out Bobby Huntley. Bobby Huntley. Bobby mm -hmm. Huntley. Gave me my first speaking role. Awesome. Gave okay. me my first speaking role and it wasn't paying, but Bobby right. um, said to me, um, Laura, if you do this role, I promise you, people will see you. Yeah. He nice. didn't lie. Wow. Because after I worked for Bobby Huntley, mm -hmm. people were hitting me up for okay. more speaking roles. Very so that's kind of how it happened. And so I was doing acting work and I was like, I want to tell this story. Choose mm -hmm. this day is based the poem that I just did. Yeah is wrapped around Tuesday's day. Nice. Oh, I can't wait. It was wrapped I around Tuesday's day. And so. I got to give a shout out. The first person who gave me my very first speaking role uh -huh. in a play, Iris Brown. Okay. My brother's keeper. And, and so, and, oh, so you got to you got to yeah. shout out the people who and gave you your Misty, first shot. And then Misty Stevens was the first person. She, um, it was all black cast. And I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. Okay. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, look, you know, Kane could be light skinned, you know, but my kids are multiracial. She's like, you know what? That might work. I was like, you need an Italian on your set. No, so, Rhonda, yeah. I don't know who I was talking to. I was like, they were like, she not, she not, um, black. I was like, yo, Rhonda's black. No, but I'm saying, I know you're not, <laughs> but I mean, right. From, Right. So being black mm -hmm. is kind of like an attitude. You oh, know yeah. what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. We understand. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. I mean, if so, you want to get technical, I'm Sicilian, <laughs> and the Moors conquered You do Sicily, know since, okay, I was That's why say. I look like I said, my ass is big, okay. my thighs are big, okay. my lips are big, my hair, I'm, I'm dark skinned compared to my family. Okay. So, that, and yeah, and I, and I prefer brothers, so. Okay. It's, it's in there. It's okay. in there. Okay. Somewhere, okay. somewhere in there. It's in there. <laughs> but anyway. Um, all right. So. With your first acting role, when did you write your first? Um, was it a play that you wrote from play. the from the poem? How did it evolve to a play? How did it evolve to a screen play? screenplay? Well, the the poems that I wrote were just so that was the first. The poem that I recited mm -hmm. was the first thing. Okay, but I continued to talk to God, okay. and He continued to answer me. Awesome, and. I know my story. Mm -hmm. And so one day I said, I'm going to do the screenplay. Gotcha. I have been in the business long enough to know that even if um, I wanted to do my whole life story, what would be the chances of getting that produced? Right. Because featureless right. films cost right. money. Right. 
God led me the whole way. Mm. He says, you're going to write and you're going to get the writing awarded. Nice. Because once someone else says that you're a yeah. good writer, mm -hmm. your negotiation your changes. Goes up. Your, pay, your value goes your up. Your value goes up. Yeah. Once and somebody so, knows your value, the price doesn't matter. Exactly. So people kept saying that it was great. Mm -hmm. It was great. It was great. It was great. And so let me see. I'm I'm coming right back. Right, I'm, not coming going right back I'm not going anywhere. That's so, all right. Oh, okay. Yeah. She got, wait till you see this, y'all. So then when they said, I feel like Vanna. I was screenwriter of the year. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> screenwriter, screenwriter of the, of the year. year. 2020. Wow. So when I, I got, got this award, it was like game over. Yeah. You know, and then of course, um, I don't have the award yet. They didn't mail it. I got the glowy too. Did you? I got the glowy okay. in Baltimore next media web fest home of the glowy. The wow. glowy is the, the, the highest wow. award you can get for wow. this screenplay. Choose this day. Okay. So choose this, choose this day, choose this day is the one. And that's what, okay. So we got, we got it. We got to explain this back here. So, <laughs> All of these circles. Oh yeah, there's are all your awards. Those are all my awards. So, and this one doesn't even hold all of them. Currently, wow. Choose This Day is an eight-time lauded screenplay. Oh wow! And, and 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 Red Flight Picture Screenplay Awards is like super big. Yeah. And we were semifinalists. We were the top in the top 250 oh, wow. out of 3,500 screenplays. Shut. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we got we got to read these awards, guys. Okay, so we got Baltimore Next Media Web Fest that, 2020. 2020. Now we were an official selection, but we won the glowy. Okay. Okay. Drama Incorporated screen, Screenplay Competition 2020. Yeah. Uh ICFF People's Choice Screenwriter of the Year winner 2020. <laughs> Red Flight Picture Screenplay Awards 2020. Georgia Shorts Film Festival 2019, Hip Hop Film Festival <laughs> 2018, International Independent <laughs> Film Awards Spring Session 2018. Damn, damn, ow. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. And I can't you, wait you, to start you. working on this. Too. Oh, man. We're working. Well, you, yeah. Rhonda's in. I know. We, we, we have put out the casting notices. <laughs> We're going to be filming tomorrow. I'm having one of the biggest meetings of my entire life. Wonderful. But I have elected to work with people that I worked with before. Okay. So Rhonda has been cast and choose this day. Yes. Mr. Westby's on. He's been cast and choose okay, this day. Okay, Teddy. Hey, Teddy. So I'm working with a lot of local Atlanta talent, but we have booked already Charles D. Clark. Yes. We already have D. Etta West. Man. And we're negotiating with other celebrities because my goal is to have the local Atlanta actors mm -hmm. have that moment yeah. with these other actors. Right. I, I just want to create this incredible. super dope environment. It's going to be incredible. It's yeah. such an honor, you know, to be even a little bit of part of that. It's such an honor. You know? yeah. Thank you so much. Well, you're the voice. So you know, you're the I voice. Mean, so yeah, you, you know, know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, let's, uh, I definitely want to pay attention to these comments. Okay. Pamela, he, she got locked up numerous times, but thanks to God. She's blessed and highly favored. Okay. Amen. All right. And yeah, April is just, yeah. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. And you I guys. promise you we're going to get that commercial right. <laughs> Right, April. I promise you. I just I don't just put up junk. So, all okay, right. So, so you got all these awards. So yeah. Choose this day is eight years running, and now no, choose this day is an eight time is an eight time award winner in two years. Oh, we oh. won eight awards in two years. I we started okay. entering in twenty eighteen. Okay. We eight time. We eight time in two, in two years. years. We wow. killing the game. Wow. Okay. I misunderstood that. Yes. Oh my God. That's huge. Yeah. That's huge. All right. Yeah. So let's get into it. You're an independent screenwriter. Yes. Now I know this is uh, your heart and soul. So what do you want to um, shed light on? That's the word I'm going to use. Really? Uh, well, and, I would, and that I've would been, be nice. And, would, I've been, and I've been drinking okay. too. All right. We're going to expose <laughs> some shit. Okay. So. What do you want people to know? First of all, independent, you know, you got to support your independent artists. I mean, there's so many people that do not support independent artists and there's so much talent. There really is. So, all right. So let's, let, let's go there. 
Let's right. go there. All right, because right. we already over the halfway mark. So let all right. y'all better be okay. Let me get ready. Yeah, get ready. Mm -hmm. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get Ooh, ready. We're gonna be like, okay. All right, since April all right, is here on, we go. let me let me just say <laughs> this. It's so deep that we're we're about to release an expose. Mm -hmm. We're naming names. Yeah. And we're talking about what's happening in the yeah. independent. And so independent yeah. guys only means that you don't have a distribution deal. Right. That's all that right. independent means. Right. But what happens is, is that some of us operate rogue. You can mm -hmm. be an independent and know what SAG rules are. Yeah. Whenever you're on my set, mm -hmm. it's run like a SAG set. Oh, yeah. It is. Am I not? And don't be Come on. late. <laughs> Shit. I was late one time. Never again. Don't be, but I know that and I know better. That's why it's like, and that's not my own, that that's not my character and that's not anything, but Hey, it doesn't matter. But, but see, day, it's what we get to through, follow is what we yeah, get through. Excellence. We're yeah. sitting here, we're yeah. chopping it up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But my set starts on time. Yeah. I have breakfast for people. Yes. I have hair for Even people. Even at a layout here for me okay. tonight of shrimp and champagne and, and fancy water and, and <laughs> I mean, okay. Yeah. We have wardrobe. Yes. We have location. Incredible makeup artists. Okay. Incredible Michelle makeup Rainey. artists. Okay. Awesome. And yeah. We take care of people. Yeah, you you need to know what the SAG rules are. Yeah. And just because you're labeled as an independent, right. it doesn't mean that you can freaking run right. amok. Right. And you pay people. We pay people. More Ooh. than dinner. Come on. More than you uh, can't, you know, people, yeah. what I'm saying is, oh, say, so April Morrison Productions, yes. I work for April Morrison yes. Productions, right? Yes. And so you might argue the fact she doesn't know a lot about filmmaking. Well, check this out. I can teach anybody anything that they don't know. Well, you, she don't right? need to know about filmmaking. All she need to do is get the people at, in place that know how to do it. At the end of yeah. the day, you cannot yeah. teach somebody how to do the right thing. No. You, and there's that saying where you can't say the wrong thing to the right person. Exactly. So yeah. in this, what I see is that everybody is so thirsty. Yeah. And it's it's never okay to be thirsty. It's okay to be hungry, but it ain't never okay Big to be difference. thirsty. Yeah. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? And so it's just a, just a whole lot of craziness, a whole lot of foolishness mm -hmm. and shenanigans. You know what I'm saying? And, and and don't get it wrong. I will pay my dues. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? But some of this stuff y'all doing is straight boo-boo. Yeah. And we're not having it. Right. So we are releasing an expose. Okay. And we're telling the story about how we dropped the whole bag. Yeah. And yeah. cats did whatever they wanted to do yeah. for the second time. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And for, for real, for real, Rhonda, mm. I really would love to keep this lady like. But we're yeah. releasing this and we, it can go wherever yeah. it go. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and it has to. But this is the thing. We can't say that we're true filmmakers if we have a story of that magnitude mm -hmm. in our laps. Right. And we charge it to the game. Right. That's why I put on my social media. I'm not charging another damn thing to the game. Mm -mm. No. Nothing. No, you've had enough. Yeah. Enough is enough. enough. Yeah. So we're going to be releasing that really, really soon. Okay. There are some people here that, that are doing the right thing and don't get it twisted. Right. There's some people that I mess with here in Atlanta and I work with them for free mm -hmm. because I know them mm -hmm. and I know their overall right. goals right. and objectives. They treat me well. They treat their actors well. Right. They're considerate, mm -hmm. you know, but this, this is what's separating us from getting distribution. Yeah. There are some people who wanted to deal with us mm -hmm. and they've gotten burnt. Yeah. So when you behave like this, yeah. you make the gap wider and yep. wider and wider. And, and you, you put even a, a, a stronger cast against independent. Absolutely. And that's why people are like, oh yeah, that's why we, we don't want to, you know, hey, we don't want to fuck with you. Exactly. That's what it is. It's, it's like, what nah, it is. Exactly. You know, so. Um, all right. So when, when is the expose coming out? We are currently in post-production. Okay. This is the first time that I've ever been a part of the editing process. Nice. Truly Good. the movie is made in post. Okay. And so, um, as we look at it, cause you did see the one minute 38, you saw the trip. Yeah. Did you I see did. the trailer? I did. Oh, uh, I did. And 
I don't know if we're allowed to say what we're talking about or not because I don't know what the rules are. You but, you could say what we're talking uh, about the okay. second the second next assignment. You sure okay. can. Okay, so yeah, so we were on production with the next assignment, and hmm. um, you know, and and I am I have a radio talk show, and my you've been to the studio, you know what it looks. I like. I know what you do. It's bright. It's I'm all over the place. I'm myself. I'm you know like I hey we. Like this, okay. Rhonda, when I looked at your clip, I was like... when I looked at your clip, <laughs> I kept looking at it, and I'm like, "This is what Rhonda does." Yeah. Why would the they, direction they, they be? Put my hair back into this little chignon, and I was like, "Wait a minute," you know. I'm like, I'm "But those are all producer calls, right?" right you understand right. what I'm saying? Yeah. So I was disrespected as the yeah. producer. Yeah. We're not gonna pay you a grip for you to disrespect me. So right. I guess what. Right. We, I'm getting ready to find out what you're working with. Right. And I didn't get into this business mm -hmm. to be who I was when I was in the street. Right. To the point right. where I had to call my family. Yeah. And my family yeah. was like, do what you got to do. Yeah. And we got you. Exactly. That's where we are now in yeah. filmmaking. Yeah. I didn't get into filmmaking for this. Yeah. So I'm looking at your clip. Dark, number one. I look like I was in a closet. And you're reading it off I was your told, phone. I was told at the last minute to read it off my phone. Who like I gives just... that kind of direction to a radio personality? And, and I was like, wait a minute. I know Laura wrote me in just for this, you know, bring that whole thing. It's like, I know how to do that. But I, I know I had to get the lines right and stuff like that. But yeah, I was told to read it like I was getting, you know, reading it from social media. I'm like, that doesn't even make sense. But Wendy okay, Williams, not gonna any, say of that, bossa, not, you know, any of the bossa I, people. I was being out, but... In, in all honesty, okay, um, I was being, I was submitting unto the leadership because this was your production, and I was there, and I was like, okay, well, if they said this, hey, and this that's is what not my show. Listen, I'm gonna do what I'm told. I to respect do. that, and but there were actors, mm -hmm. and we have it on tape. Yeah, I have actors saying, "Those are not my lines." <laughs> You don't want me to say my lines? We have okay. it on tape. We okay. have it on tape. Okay. Because we did BTS. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. But what I'm saying is why I was so irate yeah. about yours. It's not I know you do your thing. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to see you go in and now nah, and nah, I wanted to right. see you do this right. whole Wendy right. Williams right. type <laughs> thing. And I see you reading it off the phone. Yeah. Oh my God. I was like, seriously? Mm -hmm. And it went from bad to worse. It did. It did, <laughs> but, um, and no fault to the people that were filming it. Cause the film crew was awesome. Yeah, right? they, absolutely. But the whole setup, it just didn't work. But let's talk about this too. Women in production. Yeah. I mean, even down to the, me being in a dress, like professional, I don't go exactly. to the radio station Women like that. in production. Yeah. We're not, what I'm saying is, is that if I pay you what you asked me for, mm -hmm. then respect my dollar. Yeah. I don't care whether I got a this yep. or that yep. between my respect my dollar. Yeah. You understand? And so this this is a whole macho, egotistical mm -hmm. situation. But at the end of the day, I was your boss and April was everybody's yeah. boss. And you disrespected. So I guess right. guess what? Right. Cameras rolling. It's gonna be something. cameras rolling. It's gonna be something. It's yeah, definitely gonna be something. Cameras rolling. <laughs> cameras so, rolling. So now you are recasting, um, and you're resetting for the 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 second next assignment. So what's the difference between that? We've got the celebrities that you're bringing in. You mean chooses day? Oh, it's chooses day. That's what I'm working on. Oh, okay. Yes, I know separately. For, okay, because that's okay. So. Okay, then I might be confusing the two because I know for okay. next assignment, the second go round, I thought they were bringing in somebody else. But is that okay? So, so what? I, so one? now, let me just okay. So, what in my mind, and I talk to April all the time. She is going to move forward with the next assignment, but people are going to really want to see it after right. the expose. Oh yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I don't know exactly what sh she's going to do okay. with that, okay. but I'm thinking that she's thinking about actually filming that in. Texas, yeah, because that's where she is. Mm -hmm. Because she's had her fill up Atlanta, and yeah. I can't say that I blame the yeah. lady. Yeah, yeah, and I've talked to her too, and I might actually be going out there to help her and like with okay, uh, I'm a the little, actors and stuff like would you that. You like a little, I, and so no, I'm, I got to drive. I'm drinking, y'all. No, I got an hour and a half drive. I'm good. I still got this left. I ain't um, got to drive nowhere. So, <laughs> but um, so 
so when um after choose this day comes up when do you think you're going to be uh in production for that we're looking to be in production in may okay but all of that is contingent upon my celebrity contracts gotcha. so currently we have charles d clark hey charles hey charles and we also have dieta west right all right, but we are negotiating with other celebrities. Okay. Awesome. The celebrities are going to actually pull the train. Mm -hmm. They're going to pull the train. They're going to be the yeah. face of our Indiegogo. Nice. All right. And so nice. um May, mm -hmm. fingers crossed. Okay. But it's all contingent upon our celebrity okay. um secures. We okay. have to secure those. Very good. Yeah. Very good. So what do you want people to know about coming in as a screenwriter? Because you've been doing this for a long time. And what I loved about you wanting me to come here is showing what it's really like. Oh, uh, it's not this glam, glam lifestyle. So let's talk about that for a minute. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Because I love I how think, you have all of this set up. You yeah. Know? But when I, I I moved in, I came in, I, I did all the painting mm -hmm. myself, all my furniture. Mm -hmm. I bought from the Goodwill. Nothing mm -hmm. in here is, right. is, you know, retail. I don't do right. any retail anymore. Right. Yeah, I really don't either. Yeah. It's like, why? Yeah, why, right? <laughs> yeah. So um, right. you maybe you can have it all. Mm -hmm. I do want people to know I'm not a person that I don't su subscribe to. You have to have a struggle. No. That, I don't subscribe yeah. to right. that. Right. That if, you, if you're not struggling and you right. know. You're, right, right, right. I, I, right. Mm -hmm. But I do believe that <clears throat> there has to be a level of sacrifice mm -hmm. where what you want as the filmmaker doesn't supersede what everybody else wants if they're a part of your vision. Yeah. I can have a vision and I can want something. Mm -hmm. But if I have all of these people who are coming together for my vision to come right. true, right. then I have to consider what they need as well. Yeah. And so I, I just want people to know that what you want mm -hmm. can't be more important than what you need. Mm, that's good. That's re real good. That's real good. And I love the fact that and, and I can say from experience from all the different people that I've worked with, you know, on sets and plays and films and stuff like that. Um, it really is a difference on your set, you know, and like and with you and April, it's like you guys are just you're the tag team you know it's you like have you no two. idea what we go through behind the scenes bro. i don't even want to know i don't have my role with you twice i like shit that's enough okay it is all right i i, I don't even want to know what you go through but um but i love the fact and there really is a difference because you really do take care of the people and and you care about the project and you care about everything and i must say this i mean you were there before everybody you were cleaning stuff up you you weren't like oh y'all need to do this you know so you were doing all of that with us you know and everybody was participating it wasn't like this big ego thing you know and the food was ridiculous i mean you had you, you made the food yourself and stay up uh, i don't even know how many hours it took you to prepare all that food and you did that yourself and it was it was incredible and it's like you just don't see that i mean i've been on a lot of sets and it's great they'll buy all these like you know things that are already made and stuff but you didn't even do that you made you made it yourself and brought all of it in there i mean we do i mean love. april does an actor's house yeah actors come they they travel she yeah. don't have no ringy thing. She do an mm -hmm. actor's house. Te uh, thanks to Teddy, because we, we we did Teddy's family's house. You know, we do an actor's house. You know what I mean? We make sure people are, we make sure mm -hmm. people are good when they work yeah. with us. Yeah. And we're women over 50. Yes. With less, each of us, yes. less than five years experience. This is my fifth year. Oh, wow. Okay. okay? And people been in the game forever. Oh, yeah. You can't start on time. Mm -mm. You can't Get end on time. And rants and screaming at you on of set. Screaming at people on set. You know what I'm saying? Giving people Caesar, yes. little Caesar pizza. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's cold. So, again, <laughs> you know what I'm no. I'm done with it. Yeah. Don't come to me with the foolishness. Right. We get ready to get into some right. straight gangster shit. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. we done put in the work. Yeah. And and everybody is walking around like, oh, do 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 do. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, you can't do that. You can't do mm-hmm. that. No. Um, and while we wind down here, um, April said, yes, yeah, you'll be directing AMP Studios in June. And Rhonda and I will need. Oh, OK, I will definitely help you with that. <laughs> um, but um, and let's OK, let's 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 just for a second. Let's just go there when you're on set as an actor. OK. All right. I want you to talk to all. First of all, if somebody wants to audition for you and wants to be a part of what you're doing or they they have an idea or maybe they got a talent or they sing like I know you and I both know lot, lots of people that, you know, have uh, different talents and stuff. But if somebody wants to audition or if they want to be a part of something, how do they find out? about casting calls and stuff. Do you post that? I, I always post my castings okay. on Facebook and okay. on IG. And what who what's your IG handle? My IG is the Soul Writer One. I'm the Soul the Writer Soul One. Soul Writer. We gave her this for her birthday. <laughs> yes. <Okay>. Director's <laughs> chair finally. <laughs> The Soul Writer One on okay. IG I'll post. And I and normally do things internally. Yeah. And so I will say Rhonda mm-hmm. or, you know, April or Christopher right. or somebody. Do right. you know somebody yeah. Yeah. who fits the role? Yeah. Um, we will have some roles available. Okay. We will have some roles available. And of course, I'll post them on social media. I'll let you know to, so yeah. you can yeah, post. Absolutely. But we will have some available. But in terms of what I, I look for, I look for someone to really make me forget that I'm looking at an actor. Yeah. That's the key right there. Yeah. That's the key. You got to be believable. Yeah. I, I want to forget. I, I got to feel yeah. you. I got to, you yeah. got to, you got to take me somewhere. Got to take me yeah, somewhere. That's, yeah. I, that, and people think I'm really, really harsh, but I'll tell, I'm like, I, I don't believe you. And that's, that's the thing that I'm has like, to I'm, be. I don't believe you. You, you yeah. sound like you're reading lines. Yeah. No. Put the lines down. Absolutely. Bring Absolutely. the character to life. And for this one, we're dealing with um yeah. go in and, and go I in cannot and wait. yeah. Cannot wait. Yeah. So um yeah, that's what I look for. I look for okay. a person to make me forget okay. that I'm looking at an actor or okay. actress. I, I need people to show up on time. Yeah. I don't like people being late and I don't like excuses. No, you do not. I don't see too many people ripped on set, <laughs> including myself that day. <laughs> I don't like excuses. But I'm saying they don't work. <laughs> don't matter for how much your friend. I mean, shit don't work on set. <laughs> but it's the yeah. great thing about me being here with you. It's not what you go through with a person. Mm-hmm. It's what you get through with Oh, yes, yeah, absolutely. And absolutely. So, and thank and you, Queen. Thank you, Queen, as well. And the fact that, and, and I love where we are now, and, and that's a true sign of maturity. And that's the thing, too. If actors, you, you got to be mature. Absolutely. You, you have to be able to take direction and yeah. don't take it personal. personal. It's not you, personal. You can't take it personal. Yeah. Now, now it's, there's a difference if somebody's giving you constructive criticism or they're just going off on a rant, you right, know, right, and right. temper tantrum. That's different. But if somebody is really, truly trying to tell you, you know, hey, I didn't believe that. Yeah. Then that means you got some work to do. But you know what, too, Rhonda, what I find on set in between takes, the actor is now on their social media. Mm-hmm. So what if you're on your social media, unless your character has an IG or Facebook, right, right. you're out of character. Yeah. yeah. And so you're pinging in and out, yeah. pinging in and out. Yeah. When I'm on set, yeah. I'm on. Yeah. Every time I'm in, like in a play or something like that. I mean, yeah. We, we had to stay in character the whole you supposed time. to stay in character though. Like you, past rehearsal. Yeah, you, you're supposed to. If there was a month and a half of rehearsal, you were in character for a month and a half. And we would even call each other that. Like we had to call so each by other that name, by your character, by your character name. name. I wasn't Rhonda. I was yeah. whoever I was. Absolutely. You know, and yeah, and that's the key. And like that's what all the big people do. That's what Denzel does. That's what De Niro does. You they have stay, to stay in, in character. character. You have to because that character lives and breathes through you. And also when, when if you're in character. While you're doing your daily thing that you do at home, right? You're doing it as that person. Yes, it makes a huge and difference. And you, 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 you don't even realize it, but you get this shift. Yeah, about and you, you, and you start they, the the habits start. The coming, habit, the, the little, mannerism. Yeah, the, it's yeah. The, the person is a drinker or whatever, the, whatever, or if they're smoking, and then, then it, your hand is gonna start it shaking. It snaps. Yeah, and you. it's like yeah, you have to yeah, you gotta just live and breathe it. And as an actor too, it is it's. It's really a great feeling 
to say I'm getting the character mm -hmm. because I've been on productions and they said, well, Laura, you really weren't there today. And I'm mm -hmm. saying, I'm still trying to understand her. Right. I'm still right. trying to get her. But when you get your character, mm -hmm. it's so neat yeah. because you're really just this other person. Yeah. Yep. And then this incredible thing happens. Once you bring that character to life, nobody else can do that character nobody else you. can do that can character, nobody be I'm a you. but you i'm telling can you can nobody be <laughs> pearl but me can right, nobody right. be terry but me yeah. from my plays can't nobody and be, that's what you want to you do know, and it's like everybody that comes after you but wait, that's that, not that Rhonda did it this way but wait that's yeah. what you want yeah. to do right and like if you think about and I, I joke about this all the time okay training day denzel oh my God. what's the scene King oh Kong ain't, ain't got, got nothing on me. <laughs> all of y'all. And it is, you can see it. You he can, won his Oscar for that. Yeah, and his walk and everything. Yeah, yeah. Rain Man with Dust, you know, Dustin Hoffman yeah. and he, the rock and he's staying constantly with autistic people. Yeah. Nobody else could do that character but them. Yeah. And then they forever seal that it's character. Staples. It's staples. Yeah. It's a great feeling though. It is. As in, and, and I haven't done any acting. I don't, I, anything that I'm doing this year, I booked it in 2020. Nice. So I have like four things coming out from okay. 2020. Okay. I'm not doing any acting just because I need to be on a serious set mm -hmm. with serious actors. Right. And if it's not, and I need to get paid. Yeah. Right. I'm sorry. I should have said that first. Right. Okay. Yeah. But due I, time is over. Right. We, we ain't paying no more dues. We ain't paying no more dues. We don't need no more free headshots. I don't need no more <laughs> IMDb credits either. I don't need no right. But yeah. I want to be on a set where I can learn. Yeah. yeah. And the only way that you can do that, I want to be on a set when I walk in, nobody speaks to me because everybody's in character. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so some people want to come in. And hey, hey, hey. Right. No. I'm over that. Yeah. I'm over it. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, we got a, about another minute or so left. Oh, okay. So I want you to uh, tell everybody whatever's on your heart. Um, okay. And you can go any direction you want to. Okay, guys. So hey, my name is Laura, the soul writer, Poindexter. In 2021, Homecoming, I play Miss Odessa, uh, Coco Girl, Studios. I guess. Yes, 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 yes. And um, My Brother's Keeper coming out in 2021 by I did a play director. My yeah, director okay. APAR. We just okay. did a short. Um, what else did I do? Out on a limb, out on a limb nice. that is coming out in 2021. So, yes, that's what I have coming out that I did in 2020. Blood on My Hands by Theron Madison. Ooh. We filmed that in April. Um, we are doing Choose This Day. We will be putting out the mm -hmm. casting notice. Hopefully, we will be filming in May. Fingers right. crossed if we get all of our celebrity contracts in. I will put those postings out. April Morrison Productions. April! Oh, cameras rolling. Mm -hmm. The expose. Ooh. Baby, uh -huh. we got a banger with this one. And Ooh. again, we just yeah. dropping names and telling, mm -hmm, it ain't going to be no more secret. Um, if you want to get in contact with me for production, showrunner, producer, director, screenwriter, I'm Laura, the soul writer, Poindexter. You can reach me at Unshakable Faith Productions. And that email is just the way it sounds, but my email is on my social media. Facebook, Laura Poindexter. IG, the soul writer, run, one Twitter at Miss Resourceful. If all else fails, Google me, Laura Poindexter, Laura Poindexter, Laura Poindexter. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much for thank being you my for guest having tonight. me. And I cannot and share this, guys. Share, share, this. share, I'm share, share, you, share. You're going to want to be there, especially when an expose drops. <laughs> Y'all yes. have a great evening. And thank you so much for joining. This has been Rhonda's Room Over the Top TV.